Hi everyone, Anthony here from Level Up Your Teaching. Today we're looking at probably my most favorite app out there, which is called EduBlogs. EduBlogs is the door to letting your students create their own blogs on a safe environment. Being a WordPress-based platform, it allows for countless possibilities for the students to showcase their creative side. Today, though, we're going to start with the basics. First, we're going to create an account, which is a bit more complicated than a regular account, so please make sure to watch this part of the video, and then we're going to create a class, and of course, create and invite our students to EduBlogs. So, without further ado, let's go! When you enter the website, the first thing that you want to do is go to the top right corner and click sign up in order to create a new account. This will open up this new window. You can see that I've completed most of the information to speed things up a little bit. But there are two things that I would like to mention here. And one of them is your role in the blog and your site's URL. You can see that you have three different roles, educator, student and other. Now, as the teacher, you would like to choose Educator. Talking about the site URL, this is your unique ending of your website's name, so make sure it's something that relates to your class. When you're ready, you can click Create a Site. Here it shows you the information of the new registered website, and this is for two reasons, for you to check if everything is correct and to make sure that you write these things down for future reference. When you're happy, click Go to Dashboard. Now, this is your dashboard, and this is where you do most of your work on a daily basis. At the beginning, it might feel a little bit daunting, but to be honest with you, it's very simple, and we're going to break things down, so don't worry. The first thing that we're going to look at today is, of course, the My Class function. So what we want to do is create a new class. So go on and click that Create a Class button. Here you can see the different settings for the class block. The first thing that you need to do is click This is a Class Block in order to open up the new settings. And the first thing that we need to decide on is about moderating posts in the class block. Now, there are three options. Whether you would like moderation, in that case you click the middle one, or you don't want at all moderation, which in this case you click the first one, or you don't want your students to actually post on the class block, in which case you click no. Now, if you click no, that's because you want your students to have individual blocks. Talking about moderating student blocks, unfortunately, we can only moderate comments, and that's because moderating posts is not available in the free version. If you want to do that, go on and click this box. Now, this is probably the most important of all the settings that we've gone through so far. And it's about who you would like to come and visit your website. Here you got four different options. Either to discourage search engines from indexing this website, which means that people can't actually go on a search engine and search for your website. The second one means that only people who have signed up an account with EduBlogs can view this website, which means that people from the other side of the world can actually access and view your website, so you might want to bear this one in mind. The third one, which I usually use, means that only people who have registered to our website can view it, so parents who have an account, they can see your students' content. And the final one, it means that only people who have a very specific password can enter and view this website if you would like to keep things very, very secure. About the reader, this is about whether you would like your students to read each other's work through the dashboard. And I usually leave it ticked because it's a nice feature. The next one is very important and is in case you have multiple teachers. So if you have multiple, they will show up here choose the ones that are responsible only for this group. So when you're happy with the settings, right at the bottom of this page and click Save in order to create the new class. 
And you can actually see now that on the left hand side under the My class there are a few more options. One of them we're going to explore now, the student blocks. So let's go on and click. So as you can see here, there are no student blocks attached to this class. So let's go and create new to make some new users. And as you see here, only four users can be created at one time. And I suppose this is not to overload the servers. So let's click that plus icon to create new student blocks. And as you can see, it opens up a new form to put the student's credentials. I'm actually now going to close these forms because we only need to invite one student. The first thing all we need to do is choose a username for our student. I'm going to choose just a random name for a test student. Now moving on to the email, this is actually quite important because the email is actually optional. You don't really need to choose an email, but if you do, a password will be sent. However, if you don't choose an email, then you can actually assign the password for your students, which I usually do because it makes things just a little bit easier. Talking about the block URL and the block title, I usually leave these two blank because I'd like to let my students choose what they want. And if I leave them blank, then the username will be taken and used. When you're happy with your settings, you can go to the bottom and click Create Blocks in order to start the process of creating. But as you can see here, I ran into a problem. There was somebody else with exactly the same username and I tried a second one and it was still the same. So, well, I tried a third one and it worked. But so, that's something to keep in mind because some of the usernames might actually be taken. And as you can see here, it starts creating the blog. When this finishes, you will see on the right hand side two different options. We're going to click on the blog list to see how this looks. Here you will see a blog and usually if we had more students you would see more of these blogs next to each other. There are a few options here that I'd like to talk about. One of them is the visit. What the visit does, it takes you to the student's blog. The next one is the dashboard which instead takes you to the student's dashboard. Finally the post pages and comments show you how many of these are pending for you to approve and how many and how many of these exist in total. Finally, if you've made a mistake and you would like to delete one of the blocks, you can just click delete block and this will remove it. So this is it. This is the end of our first EduBlocks video of the EduBlocks video series. Thanks a lot for watching and now let's get back for a quick summary of the video we've just watched. Thank you very much for watching this video for the EduBlock video series. In the next one, we're going to look at how to create our content, in other words, how to create posts and how to enrich them with different types of media like pictures and videos. Once again, thank you very much. If you like the video, please make sure you like and subscribe. Let me know of your questions in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.